So the most popular video on my channel by far in terms of both views and comments is the video where I talked about how to migrate your OS for free using an older version of Minitool. Now, with it being the most popular, a lot of those comments are people having issues or asking questions. And it seems like the ability to see the description or the pinned comment isn't as easy on all platforms. Um, so I thought I would make a quick video talking about the most common maybe misconceptions and also answering some frequently asked questions as well. So the first major misconception is when you should be using something like this, whether it's this tool or another, when you should be migrating your OS from one drive to another. And in reality, this should only be done when upgrading your OS drive. So whether that situation is you changing from a hard drive to an SSD, changing from a SATA SSD to an NVMe SSD, changing the size of your drive, what have you, those are all perfectly good situations to be migrating your OS. Where you should not be using this is when changing over all of your hardware. So from moving from one computer to another, building a new computer, things like that, you should not be migrating your OS. There's a lot of reasons for it, but some of the main reasons are driver issues and drivers basically not being compatible with one another. It can cause issues down the road. In those kinds of situations, even if you're doing a major hardware change like upgrading your motherboard, um, it is usually suggested that you go ahead and do a fresh Windows install instead. You can skip all these pains. You can migrate things over and be ready for a fresh install. I actually have a video on that that I will link up here somewhere where you can bring over a lot of that data and not be as far behind, um, but it is recommended in those situations to do a fresh install. Now, the second main misconception is what migrating your OS actually entails. And people are like, hey, you know, it copied over everything. This isn't migrating my OS. And you have to understand that your OS is more than just the Windows folder in the File Explorer. Your entire C drive, or majority of it at least, a lot of those files and folders within there are all being used by Windows and they're all required by certain things in Windows. And when you're doing any tool to migrate your OS, you are basically migrating the C partition. So whatever size your C drive is, when you migrate that over, that's what's gonna be on the new drive uh, when migrating your OS. The C drive contains a lot of things like the user information, app data, program data, whole bunch of things. And if you're migrating your OS, you're migrating all those things over. So I also did do a video on how to slim down your C drive, maybe what's taking up space, things like that. Again, I'll link it up here. But that misconception seems to be very common and it's understandable, but I'm just trying to help explain those situations a little bit easier. Now that does transition really well into the frequently asked questions because one of the most frequently asked questions is, hey, uh, partition wizard is telling me that my drive is too small. Reason for that is because your drive's too small. Um, if you're moving from a one terabyte hard drive to a 500 gig SSD, and the amount of used space on that one terabyte hard drive is more than 500 gigs, I'm gonna tell you that it's too small. You have to make sure that you reduce the size used on the C partition. If the partition itself is larger, that's fine, but the used space is what's important. And if your used space is more than 500 gigs, you're gonna have to reduce that size in order to move it over to the 500 gig drive, for example. In that video I had just talked about, I talk about ways that you can help slim down your C drive, whether it's moving some things off to an external, um, moving some things to a temporary storage and then bringing them back over, lots of things like that. Go ahead and check out the video if you need help. But in reality, if it says your drive is too small, it's because your drive is too small and you wanna make sure that your use space is smaller than the full size of the destination drive minus maybe a gig or two because you're also going to have part, uh, system and recovery partitions. Now that also goes over to the next frequently asked question is, hey, there are these other drive letters that are appearing. They're very small, they're under a gig, and I can't access them in the File Explorer. What's up with that? And usually this is due to Windows by accident or just during the copy process assigning a drive letter to your recovery or your system partition. 
and these are present on any boot drive. They are extremely important for Windows, so you do not want to delete them. All you have to do though is just remove the drive letter. So if you go into disk management, and you can go into that by just hitting your Windows key and doing disk management, and it'll be the create and format hard disk partitions. You can launch that. It may take a second depending on how many drives you have. And you can find your main boot drive here. And as you can see, there is a system and a recovery partition. Now, during the copy process, they may be assigned a drive letter. To remove a drive letter from anything, you can you can basically hide any partition you want. You can right click on it on one that has a drive letter. You go to change drive letter and paths, and then you can remove it. You can also do this directly within mini tool if you still have that open. It's a very easy process to do and that should solve your issue. Now the third most popular question is, hey, I'm getting stuck on the 0% copy situation in the bootable menu, which is the DOS looking like menu. Hey, am I able to stop this and restart it? Hey, um, you know, what's going on? How come I can't get past this? And so on. And I saw this question coming up quite a bit after the video first went live. So what I ended up doing was searching through my files to see if I had another version of Minitool, not 10.0, maybe 10.5, 10.7, 11, but making sure that it still had the OS migration as a free option and not locked behind a paywall. Ended up finding an 11.5 on one of my old hard drives, and I uploaded that and mentioned it that that should solve your issues. So if you are getting the 0% issue, you are okay to turn off your computer, reboot, I would uninstall 10.0 and install 11.5, and that should solve that issue. I haven't heard of anybody continuing to have the issue with 11.5. You don't have to worry about your data because it is doing a copy, right? We're not moving things over, we're copying things over. So your origin drive or your current Windows drive, it'll still be fine. What you may have to do is just clear the destination drive if anything did copy over, wipe it clean and start from scratch. Now mentioning 11.5 brings up the next most frequently asked question is, hey, I'm getting a antivirus pop-up. Hey, I'm getting a Windows Defender pop-up. Are you distributing malware? What's going on? Is this safe? I don't know exactly why the mini tool 11.5, for example, is triggering antivirus and Windows Defender. Just be aware though that antivirus tools do have false positives. I am not distributing malware. I am not actively trying to do anything malicious. These again are files that I downloaded directly from Minitool at the time that they were the current versions. They are signed by Minitool, they are official by Minitool. And the false positives are very common of software that is out of date. It is very common of software that is doing a lot of things on the system side of things. I did a video with Medicat a few weeks ago where just installing that program, you have to whitelist it in your antivirus software to be able to install it onto a USB. And it's just because the nature of the way that the software works. Now, in the end, I can't convince you to trust me. I can't convince you to trust, trust the software. And if you don't, that's totally fine. I'm not taking it personally. You will have to find another option. And I do have a few other videos talking about how to do it with RescueZilla for free, and then how to do it with Aomi and Minitool on the paid versions. Now that's entirely up to you. But I do want to say, and I do want to reiterate that I am not trying to be malicious. I am not trying to install malware or anything on your computer. Um, it's just the nature of using outdated pieces of software usually. Now, another frequently asked question is, hey, I'm getting told that I have to pay to use the Migrate OS. What's up with that? You said it's free. Or now, hey, this is buying a paywall now. What's going on? Uh, why would you suggest this? It's not free, so on and so forth. And if you're being told that you have to pay for it, you are not using the versions that I provided. If you're getting told that you have to pay for it, you most likely downloaded the most current version directly from their website, which is 12 point whatever it is at that point in time. Um, if you're using the 10.0 or the 11.5 that I'm providing, they will never ask you for a paywall. They are old versions of software they are never being updated. So there's never a way for it to change. Um, they will never ask you to pay to do the software. So you can easily check which version you have actually installed by going to your installed apps. If you're on windows 11 or the add or remove programs on windows 10. And if you go ahead and you search for the mini tool, it will tell you the version either in the name or in a version thing underneath. 
So if it does not say 10 or 11.5, you are using a version that I did not provide you. And that's why you're getting the uh, pop-up asking you to pay for it. Another really commonly asked question is, hey, am I okay to clear my drive after this is done? You know, do I have to keep this around? You know, what, what do I have to do? And in reality, as long as you can confirm and you are confident that you have all of your data from your original drive on your new drive, you're okay to clear off the original drive. I would highly suggest you make sure that you're able to boot from the new drive, perfectly fine. I would highly suggest maybe you do a spot check of a few files, take a look at the actual size of your C drive on your origin drive versus your new drive, and they should be the same. Um, but as long as you are confident, you are okay to clear that old drive, but that is not something that I am responsible for. It's not something that you should be asking me is, as long as you are confident, you are totally fine to clear that old drive. Now, again, using an old piece of software, you are gonna run into issues. Um, they're not gonna be fixed because it's not being updated. And I'm trying to provide as much help and assistance to everybody as possible, but there's only so much I can do. So if there's anything that you're getting stuck on and you're just getting frustrated and you're like, you know what, I'd rather pay for a piece of software, you're more than welcome to. I've done videos on Aomi's software. I've done videos on Minitools paid software. I'm actually currently doing a giveaway of Minitools software until the end of the month. So uh, that's the month of September, 2023. So if you wanna go ahead and do that, go ahead and go check out that video and, in, and you can check out how to join that giveaway. But whatever method you wanna do, I do have a free version, like I said, with RescueZilla. I will leave links to all these videos in the description. You can check all of them out. And if you are not happy with this method or it's causing you too many issues, you're welcome to use one of those other ones. Now, if you still do wanna use the free mini tool version and you're having issues, leaving questions in the comments is honestly not the best way for me to help you comments are not a great place for going back and forth they don't allow you to provide a lot of information and sometimes i don't even get notified so the best place to get help is in my discord i have a section called it help desk and all i ask you do is you go in there you go ahead and create a post you explain your situation in as much detail as possible, provide as much uh, information as possible, and either myself or somebody else, most likely me, will help you whenever I get a chance to. Now remember, YouTube is not my job. I do not make very much money from this at all. And so I am not able to answer people immediately, so you may have to wait a little bit, just be patient. I try to help out everybody as much as possible you can scroll through the help desk and see all of the questions and all the things that I've tried helping people with in the past. A good suggestion is when you're reading your title, put detail in the title and you can see if somebody has already asked that same question and gotten an answer for it. With all that said, I really do hope that this video, one of my other videos or the discord does help you out. And if it does, I really would appreciate if you like subscribe. If you have any questions regarding Minitool, again, please leave those in the Discord. If you have any comments or feedback for me, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and I will be happy to get back to them as soon as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsor, Slot Simon Stepak, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do wanna see a playlist with all of the videos regarding tools that can help you migrate your OS or manage your drives, I will make a playlist and leave it right up here. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.